Say you're creating a family budget. You gather the family around the dining room table to discuss how to spend the limited family funds. Some stuff you can assume you'll need to spend on a regular basis, like food, rent, and gas. Other things you would only purchase as needed, like new tires or bricks. Each month, you add up your regular expenses and the as-needed expenses and figure out how much you'll be spending. It makes sense, right? Well, for nearly 200 years, this is how Congress and the President used to do it. Originally, Congress and the President would have to work together to decide how the U.S. government would spend the money. However, in 1974, something interesting happened. President Nixon and Congress hadn't gotten along very well, and they had some disagreements over how to spend the money. And the President prevented some of the money from being spent. In other words, he impounded it. Congress didn't like this, and they passed the Congressional Budget Act of 1974. This changed the rules. Instead of requiring Congress and the President to agree on what to spend, spending, by default, now happens on autopilot. They call this baseline budgeting, and what it means is that all spending in new budgets automatically starts at a certain rate, or baseline. This baseline is calculated by taking the current spending and increasing it slightly. Everything spent in the last budget is spent in the new budget, plus a slight increase. All of this happens even if Congress and the President do nothing. So let's go back to your family budget. Some months you have to spend more than other months, and let's say that last month in particular was kinda tight. You had to get a new car engine, and your little girl had to get braces. If you follow Congress's rules, or Cong rules, you would start your family budgeting with what you spent last month, increase it by about 6%, and add to it anything that you need to spend this month. Well, one can quickly see where this would lead. You'd buy a lot of stuff that you really don't need, using a lot of money you really do not have. Now going back to your family budget, suppose you decide it's time to get a new car. After some persuasion, your family agrees, and so you load up the family and go car shopping. You've saved up $10,000 to spend on an economical car. When you get there, you find a car that you really want, but normally sells for $15,000. However, today, it sells for $11,000. Well, you and your family decide it's a steal and you buy it on the spot, thinking that you just saved $4,000. But if you think about it, you really didn't save $4,000. In fact, you just spent $11,000. So really, your suave saving wasn't so suave after all. And as far as your budget is concerned, you actually spent the $10,000 plus $1,000 more than you intended. Now this brings us to the myth of congressional budget cuts. You've probably heard on TV or on the radio or somewhere of Congress cutting the budget here and there, but rarely is it actually true. Remember the budget baseline I talked about earlier, and how it's projected to grow at a certain rate? Sometimes they decide to have it grow at a slightly slower pace, and so the difference between the big increase in the budget and the not quite as big increase in the budget is the cut you hear about. So if they were going to increase spending by 7%, but only increase it by 4%, they call that a 3% cut. So Congress doesn't ever actually cut the budget, in the same way that you don't cut four grand from your family's expenses every time you spend $11,000 on a $15,000 car.